Welcome back to Lost in Roshar, the ultimate journey through the Stormlight Archive. I'm Christian Kremling, and with returning Truthless, who's not definitely, definitely not writing epigraphs, Jake. No, I actually back. should change that. Who's oh. I, I should I should change my name on that because he's definitely not. Um, <laughs> but everyone else can't see it. I just realized that I was just they yeah, don't know okay. what you're referring. They don't have. We're always on Streamyard, so like we can see each other. And I have yeah. a name usually. And today it's truthless. The last time it was truthless of maybe not writing the epigraphs, and I forgot to change it because the first for the first episode of Wind of Truth, it was truthless of writing the epigraphs. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, the tides have turned. Today we are covering Wind and Truth preview chapters 7, 8, and 9. So if you are not reading the preview chapters, if you have randomly clicked ahead in the playlist and have stumbled here, go away please because we are spoiling everything. And this is Jake's last episode of the preview chapters. because yeah, You guys don't know what I've sacrificed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> the absolute <laughs> bastard has gotten his hands on an arc of part one. And I think after I click end recording... I won't see you until December, basically. <laughs> Is that the plan? Uh, yep, yeah, sadly, probably. Oh, um, there might be a couple weeks in between, like, the <laughs> last one we get. In which yeah. case, I, I think the excerpt is just everything we're going to get, everyone else is going to get pre-release. But uh, for those of you who, if you Goodreads review things regularly, like if you regularly review books or have even a small channel, um, I mean, Christian might be able to get it, but... Um, yeah, I don't want to get them though. I want to. Uh, yeah, it'll if you go fun. to Net Galley and you search "Wind and Truth" excerpt and request it, there's a good chance you get it. And I got it a few days ago, <laughs> and I was all excited because I was at work and I got the notification on the email like you've you've been accepted. And I was like, yes, I can read it when I get home. And then I was like, I agreed to go on Lost in Roshar, <laughs> and like one of the appeals of Lost in Roshar is that both people know the same amount of stuff about yes. like both bo neither person has to worry about spoiling the other like that's a i think a defining characteristic of your part like sometimes there'll be a, a show like this where like one person knows what's going to happen and the other doesn't mm. we don't do that here christian like because he likes to th we throw out wild sh and i can't throw out wild sh in theories if i have read further than christian so mm. like this just doesn't work if i've read through like chapter 15. Like it just yeah. doesn't. So I have the conversation with Christian was basically, I will, um, I didn't know what I was going to do. Was I going to either just read it and be like, get wrecked. Was I going to not read it? Um, and I ended up deciding I will record this one and I have not read chapter 10. I did read the chapter epigraph for chapter 10. Um, but oh. whatever. <laughs> um, I just not did so that good. like right now and he saw it. And I was like, I should read it to you. And it was like, no. Um, but, That's um, okay. You as soon as this you. ends, as soon as this ends, I'm, <laughs> I think I'm literally going to go probably read it. It's like 6 30 PM. So this will probably finish at like seven something PM. And I'll probably, I've already had dinner. I'll probably just read until like 1 AM. Oh. Jealous, but also, I don't know. This is my first time doing previews. So I, I like the week by week. Maybe, yeah, I, maybe, I just, maybe later I would give I, up. I but. just have access and I can't, I it's just there. <laughs> It's, I like the week I by refuse. week as well. Now it's I, I get to see other people's absolutely. reactions. I, I'll still reread them every like every week. I think when they come out. But oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, you are thus I, barred. I need to know what happens. You are thus barred from the Lost in Roshar um, family. Uh, we say yeah. We I'll, just say no good Raff, I'll just comment Raffo. I'll just comment Raffo. Oh, how videos. annoying! How annoying will that be? <laughs> so I hope you guys like Jimmy, or he can find a third guest. Whatever. We'll see. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah. So, guys, just so you know, Jimmy's traveling. He's um, gallivanting across the world, living his best life. Um, I hey, I've tried for other guests, but um, you know, radio silence here in this corner of Rocha. We are in a remote, remote spot, so span reads are not coming through. <laughs> who's a one who's ignoring you? Who's leaving uh, you? Oh, I shan't. I, I shan't slander the good people of Rocha. I want to go yell at them. I'll be like, <laughs> "Why do you lose?" I've tried. I've tried many an avenue, but you know what? I've accepted. Okay, no I have a question. Are you trying like reasonably accessible people, or are you yeah. like, I wonder if Daniel Green will come on? <laughs> hey. I've, I've done both i've done i've i've shot for the stars and i've also do uh, do we know if uh, do we know Stop if victor it. rumbling mama <laughs> is reading the pre-release pre oh yeah happened? my dad's probably still like come on son message yeah. Wemby. he'll be up for it yeah sure dad 
I want to jump straight into a span read because I got this span read today and it made my day. So I'm going to, it's from Suzanne. Uh, Hi guys and dear fellow Kremlings. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of your podcast from Germany. Thank you for your great work, your enthusiasm and the fun in each episode. I really love it. Imagine my surprise when I realized just recently that there is a town called Kremlingen in Germany. (laughs) I drove past the road sign on the motorway, but I was alone in the car and couldn't take a photograph, but I found a picture of the town sign and she's attached to this email. So she says in Germany, the Kremlings have at least one base on this planet and they don't even have to hide the fact. Do they come by as Shadesma? Is Shadesma that big? What do you think? Best wishes. Keep on podcasting. Kremlings of the world. Unite, Susie. Thank you for the greatest span read of all time. We have found a town called Kremling, I think, in the States, but Kremlin in, in Germany. See, now they have two bases. They're spreading. I think it is a conspiracy. <laughs> and I just know where my next holiday is. So Just straight to Kremlin. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Like, I mean, imagine explaining to your family, like, "Oh, you're going to like Germany? What are you going to Germany for?" Ah, this is how it's called oh, Kremlin. And listen, I think it might connect to a book series, and the events <laughs> of this book might be real, and there might be a bunch of small crab-like <laughs> things that are sentient who might be running a conspiracy for world domination. Oh man, I uh, <laughs> I was on the Stormlight Reddit, and people were talking about how are you preparing. Uh, for the reread, I think it was a thread like that. Someone said, someone's like, oh, I recommend Lost in Roshar. They're really good. And somebody replied, oh, you know, they've lost their way. Um, but now they just have banter and obsess over Kremlings. This was like an unironic, <laughs> really. Bro, that's, that's what we've been doing this I'm entire like, time. That kind, of, kind of sounds like a selling point to me. I'm just, that's, uh, <laughs> that's just what we were doing the entire time. <laughs> that's yeah, like. I mean, literally the first episode is me being like, there might be Kremlings in the prelude. <laughs> This is not a. I mean, there are. I feel like there are Kremlin. Oh, absolutely. You weren't like there might be. You were like there oh, are. Yes, and Jimmy was like interesting. I didn't know about the Kremlings. <laughs> and thus the the Kremlin war started. Mm. Um, if we lost our way recently, I've been appearing more. Maybe they just like Jimmy more than me. No, no. They, it went on to say um, they only st- talk about Stormlight when it's Jake on. So you had a fan there who was just oh. like bring back Jake. <laughs> this is <sad. laughs> It's the constant Jake v. Jimmy battle. Guys, we don't have to be like this. Just um, let's just enjoy uh, talking about Stormlight. All right, I want to throw yeah, in another Yeah, it's story. not a competition, but if you want to <laughs> keep doing that. No, Jimmy's good. Jimmy's good. All right, next one. And I want to talk about this because I actually stumbled upon this because in my free time, I'm still looking at the Way of Kings like an absolute weirdo. So this is from Ben. Hey, C and J. Didn't didn't classify the J, so we don't know. I get it would be redundant <laughs> to say you just <laughs> didn't know which one it would be. So we ran. Oh, Same what first a ledge. letter. First this off, is the type of thing that'd be an epigraph. We're like seeing J, and we'd be like, <laughs> "Who's which J is it?" C and it's actually J equals podcast. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> all right first off i'm a big fan of the podcast and the channel as a whole thank you super stoked to have the ability to tune in and nerd out on the series with you guys i'm rereading stormlight archive and currently on the tail end of oathbringer and have read through the 10 preview chapters for what and come across and came across an interesting passage chapter 111 um Unite them, a voice whispered the words in Dalinar's mind, echoing with the same resonant sound from months ago when Dalinar had first started seeing the visions. I'm doing so, Dalinar whispered back. Unite them. Stormfather, is that you? Why do you keep saying this to me? I said nothing. And then he goes on to say, my first impression is that this is the wind or possibly another splinter or similar entity talking to Dalinar, similar to how she talks to Kaladin in the Watt preview chapters. I believe since both... Both the Stormfather and the Wind are both italicized in the books. There are numerous instances where we are led to believe this is the Stormfather when in actuality it is not. Please sow the seeds on this theory. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Bridge Force salute, Ben. This is is also really interesting because he has the dream in Oathbringer, like the vision um, in Oathbringer that he assumes was the Stormfather because it felt like a vision. And the Stormfather was like, I didn't do anything. Like, that wasn't me. And he was just like, oh, interesting. Um, So, yeah, like, there's definitely something funky going on. Um, Oh, man. Well, he's he's kindly requested to sow seeds on this theory, and I've got my packet of seeds ready. Um, (laughs) Because funnily enough, I was looking at the Way of Kings the other day, and um, Dalinar heard another similar voice, and I'm starting to think the wind has been speaking to Dalinar too. 
And when I saw this, I immediately like screen capped it. So let me see where oh. I put this on my on my computer. Oh. This guy's prepared. Because I guess I was, the the person won't be able to watch later, but they won't know that when um when he read out that passage, I reacted to it and I was like, ooh, eyebrows up, like, ooh, interesting. Ooh. So they, they won't know that. But I'm like, <laughs> you might be cooking. this could, might be cooking. It could be cooking. All right. So this is um oh, I probably should have written written down the chapter. I think it's around chapter twenty or so in The Way of Kings. Adolin called for his horse, but Dalinar just stood, looking down at the dead. Parshendi blood was orange and smelt like mold. Yet their faces, marbled black or white and red, looked so human. A parchment nurse had practically raised Dalinar. And then in italics it says, Life before death. And then he go and then it says, What was that voice? And interestingly, that phrase, I, I know we've heard that phrase a million times, life before death, is the phrase that um Kaladin hears without attributing it to Syl or anyone else as well. So the wind is just loving life before death. I'm, I'm assuming it's the wind. Who else is it? What if, here's a gotcha question that, mm. where do the words come to people from? Like the words are, it just feels like people just know them. Yeah, right. <clears throat> do, do the words come Maybe from it's the, the wind? wind? Yeah. Yeah. And also like Dalinar, it's in every Dalinar chapter, it's like unite them in italics. And I oh, wonder yeah. if, like, he, if, is, if you take a sip win. every time Dalinar hears <laughs> Unite Them, you're not making it. You'll be Dalinar six years ago. <laughs> is it seven now? Seven, yeah. Drunk Dalinar. Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe he was hearing it and then he made it a drinking game and then, you know, <laughs> he lost his way. <laughs> and he forgot about that because of how much yeah. he was um, But yeah, that, that'd be interesting because actually now I'm like, maybe the wind is... And that would mean if the wind was gone, mm. like the being the wind, people would not be able to swear radiant oaths anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or they so have I think to like, on to something for sure. And I think we'll have many instances then. of this, right? Yeah. We're going to hear... Oh, I mean, I'm sure on reread after Wind and Truth, oh, it's going to just be like wind. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going to do Rhythm of War in October, and I'm sure I'm going to see the wind a lot. Oh, I have to keep an eye on that. In the distance, like my cat is sleeping on the couch and she's starting to like lean off. And she, if she stretches, she's falling off the couch. And it's going to be so funny <laughs> if it does. So I start abruptly laughing. Okay. Come on. Just do a big <laughs> I love that egging it on. Come on. Fall off. It's so well, funny. Like she'll be cat. fine, obviously. Fine. Yeah. Like I would not cheer for my cat to get hurt. Oh, there's a little bit of a stretch. There's a yawn. No. Nope. Potential. Oh, damn. One day. But hey, I guess the next thing, the biggest news, the US cover of Wind and Truth has been bestowed upon us by Michael Whalen, the GOAT of fantasy yes. covers. And uh, Simon, I, Mark Simonetti is the GOAT. Mark Whalen's second. Um, oh, sorry, I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I love Mark Simonetti. Um, oh, ever since the Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, anyway. Um, so this, this, yeah, he does. This cover, wow. Like, at first, I was like, oh, it's just Dalinar with his best book reaching out to the sunset. But the longer I look at it, the more it's growing on me, the more uh, I love it. Did you see the audiobook version? It's a little bit wider than yeah, the... Yeah, uh, a little bit yeah. wider, yes. So yeah. having said that, I still want that super wide, oh, widescreen yeah. back cover included because I was going to make a video over analyzing the front cover, but I feel like that will be yeah wait for that one week. wait for yeah. that one yeah yeah I'm like the full the spread that like you'd have as like the background of your computer like the wallpaper and i absolutely will <laughs> like in two seconds that's my backdrop yeah that's um, gonna be i think my phone backdrop has been the rhythm of war wallpaper yeah since it <laughs> since it became oh, a nice. thing yeah it looks good um so i immediately when i woke up and i saw this i posted it and i put the iconic quote um the like about the night of sorrows and the sun approaching the horizon because that's immediately what i thought of this sun is approaching that horizon at a blistering pace and dalinar is trying to <laughs> stop it with his dramatic hand um he, he's <laughs> trying to like use the force to stop the sun from going down yeah that's exactly what i've taken from it actually uh, that's a good question is is he looking i guess there's no way to tell because you're a theorist a circle so any way to mm -hmm. tell whether he's looking east or west is the sun setting or rising 
I feel like he's looking at the origin. You know how he's always looking over there and now the yeah. sun's Does the sun down. set on the same side on Roshar as it does on Earth? Mm. Funny. One nerdy enough to remember that off the top I'm of your sure head. I'm sure the copper mind will have that for you. Um, but yeah, look. Okay, so there's that, right, where I have where I put that quote. That's, a, that's immediately what I thought of. Like, we're finally here. This moment has finally come to fruition. Or not. Maybe that's really far in the future. But then, of course, what I do is I zoom in and I start trying to look for secrets. And the biggest thing that's sticking out to me are these little spren like things in the stone right behind the word wind yep. and i don't know man my my brain was just like i mean they look like bubbles almost it looks like it's a translucent stone and there's like bubbles within but there's like almost like glyphs on 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 one of them it looks like almost like a cursive m yeah if stormlight like had wards i'd be like oh that's like a ward that someone carved into yeah. it but i don't think stormlight has wards so but, uh, I was wondering, because like we have all these, I mean, it's going to be Seth, it's going to be the stones, the voices in the stones. This feels like somewhat of a hint towards what we might be seeing. Um, but that's why I want to see the full the full spread, because I feel like we might get a clearer idea of what we're looking at. Also, though, you look at Witherm of War and the spread, like the weird shades of my landscape, those ones behind shallan that are like kind of like diamonds i still i don't know if i ever went to clarify what the heck those were yeah those are just was... like some kind of cool brand the rhythm of war cover is so good it's my favorite still i think out of all yeah of the for me like it's it, it it's my least favorite is oathbringer and then my favorite is between rhythm of war and way of kings it depends what day you ask me and yeah. then Right now, Wind and Truth and Words of... I think I like Wind of Truth cover more than the Words of Radiance cover. I agree. Maybe. I like it way more than I think Words I'd of go, Radiance. I think I'd go... Way of Kings, Words of... Way of Kings, Rhythm of War, Wind and Truth, Words of Radiance, Oathbringer for the covers. Mm. Oathbringer, the front is really strong. The I always forget what these bloody things are called. What are those things? Um, the giant rock creatures. Uh, uh, Thunderclass? Yeah, th- the Thunderclass Just looks a little... It's kind of funny that we forget because Thunderclass are mentioned in like the first word of the prelude of Wave Kings. <laughs> yeah, I know. But like there's something about the Thunderclass in the Oathbringer back cover just looks like a little goofy to me. I don't know why. But like Yasna on the front looks... I feel like on the other way around where whenever I see the Oathbringer cover, I'm kind of just like, yeah, you know, this bit's whatever. But when I see the full art spread artwork, I'm like, okay, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's like the red lightning in the background, all the spears. Um, mm. I think I would say, you know, this is how I'm going to differentiate Wave Kings and Rhythm of War. I think I like the full wallpaper of Wave Kings slightly more, but on mm. the book, I think I like Rhythm of War more. It's just, it's got mm. such a like good, cool color scheme. Yeah, it does. It's interesting. Like I've got. Like I've got so much like Stormlight stuff saved to my computer and meticu- meticulously filed. And I was just looking through the covers now and I've got two Rhythm of War covers. One saved from like earlier in 2020 and one from like what I guess is the final cover. And you can see like there's actually some subtle changes that were made, like some shading, some proportions of Shalan were slightly different, some extra, the color was a bit boosted. So Have you I seen wonder the various if we... versions of Kaladin on Words of Radiance. I yeah, I vaguely remember seeing that. Yeah, those are pretty janky ones. That's my problem with um, Words of Radiance because I still feel like the final one doesn't quite l- like look like Kaladin as I know him now. Um, he just seems like standard fantasy protagonist looking dude, not like immediately like, I'm like oh, it's yeah. Kaladin. And then there's Zeth with a, on top of a pile of corpses. I mean, that's, that's that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the biggest issue with Words of Radiance is just it's the Shattered Plains again. And it's kind of like, okay. Like, I feel like... I, this sounds... But the end of Words of Radiance is happening in the middle of a high storm and an ever storm. Oh, mm. I just realized something. Okay, our Rhythm of War breaks it. So I was thinking, Way of Kings, high storm. Words of Radiance happens in the middle of a high storm and an ever storm. Mm-hmm. Oathbringer, you can see red lightning in the background on the other page, and then Wind and Truth is like fully probably an Everstorm. It's like there's a progression of amount of Everstorm 
with the one outlier of Rhythm of War that just has no <laughs> storm. Well, it has the sun approaching the horizon in Rhythm of War. It's got the shades, my sun, and the clouds, which I which I freaking adore. Yeah, I'm not like so good. I, I'm not completely convinced. It's I mean, of course, it matches the description of an Everstorm Wind and Truth cover, but I don't know. This just feels absolutely monumental, like the scene we're looking at with Dalinar up there. Also, we it's, do know if it's wet, west or east, because if it's an if it's an Everstorm, we know what direction Everstorms come from, and it's not going to be like Dalinar's looking at an Everstorm that already passed. Oh. Yeah, and like you, you asked me if this was the contest of champions before. It kind of does look like Dalinar's busting a move. <laughs> in this it moment. does, and we don't know what the contest of champions is actually going to be. Yeah, it's a dance it's battle. Like... So if you yeah. follow that peak in the distance, Odi like who at Taravangian's just like. Okay. So the problem is we don't actually know <laughs> what direction the sun sets in and the sun rises in. If we're. Mm. We could get super ultra nerdy, but I, no, that wouldn't even work. I'm going to save it for my absolutely unhinged video where I will overanalyze okay. it to death. Oh, they don't even have the words east and west in Rhythm War. They have stormward and leeward on the compass. Oh, okay. They have north, stormward, south, and leeward. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> whatever man uh well hey look guys the cover's out we'll be talking about it anyway i, I think I'm it's sure. an everstorm because it's just like red lightning but it could mm -hmm. be a special everstorm right yeah maybe maybe could be yeah it could knows. be the true everstorm i'm sure you'll know whatever. jake in about three hours time well i mean i probably won't get answers <laughs> i probably won't get answers because it's just it's still <laughs> gonna be like the first third of the book all i want to hear from you is just like a non-spoiler impression that's all i want to know just what if i'm just like it's terrible <laughs> it's absolute trash <laughs> christian i'm like he went full sellout um he's he's actually just he doesn't care about writing anymore and he's just been trying to sell this book and now he's written it he's just like <laughs> oh there's no way man there's absolutely no way hey all right let's do the epigraphs I've, um, i think i'll just tell you i'm just yeah. gonna tell you no matter what i'm just gonna be like yeah i read it and you know Kaladin, Shalon, Dalinar, Navani, Adolin, and Zeth all died. I really wasn't <laughs> expecting that. And now it's just lift for the whole yeah, book. Yeah, it's actually we. He's he uh, at the end. It's like Sanderson being like, "So you're probably surprised by this, but Lift is actually the protagonist of the series. So the rest of this book is only Lift point of views." Yeah, Lift and Nightblood. Perfect. No, Nightblood got destroyed with Zeth. Oh, damn. no more Nightblood. Yeah, only no Lift. Snacks. Yasna's dead as well. Tom, <laughs> all of them. Can you imagine if someone just skipped ahead to this exact point? Like, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, okay, if that, yeah, I'm lying. <laughs> They're all dead. All right. Okay, so I've uh, continued these epigraphs. I've compiled it. All right. So it ended on They Are My Witnesses, right? Yes, Probably. that was where we ended up last time. Anyway, around about here, it says... However, the wind did not think like a person does. This should not surprise anyone who has a familiarity with Spren, though such things are less common now than they once were. So Spren, uh, bye-bye. Her memory was keen, but her interpretation and explanation of that memory could be fanciful. Those days, though, I believe she was deliberate, concerned, and focused. She did not see the future, but somehow knew it anyway. All agreed the first key moment came when Kaladin Stormblessed listened. Though not an edge dancer, he did a fine impression of their oaths. For those who forget that, it's I will remember those who have been forgotten and I will listen to those who are ignored or something like that. Yeah, so therapist mode activated. I have a question. Yeah. When, you, uh, when you saw that epigraph, did you have to Google the edge dancer oath? Uh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. I don't know my O's of the, even though I am an edge dancer, according to the quiz, I, I, sure. I, I actually don't know the truth watcher O's. I imagine we'll find out in the flashbacks <laughs> of book seven, but every time I do the quiz, I'm yeah, a truth, they're not, truth do they exist anywhere? We don't know them. Hey, eh? we don't know the truth. Watcher. Uh, yeah. I mean, presumably never they have O's. I guess it'd be funny if, um, the light weavers have to say truths and the truth watchers have to say lies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. But okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm assuming so. But it would be cool if there's like different themes because I mean we'll get into Shalan soon. Uh, 
with like her weird tally of truths uh, and what they mean. But okay, so the wind is finally referred to as a spren for the first time, I think. I think, maybe. Um, uh, at least for me, it's standing out now. I'm like, oh, it's a spren. Um, it's well, kind of everything is, is when, um, yeah, I, I mean, so I actually don't know if it's confirmed that the wind is a spren, but it gets compared to a spren, and like it shouldn't surprise anyone that the representation of an object mm-hmm. should have can have some kind of like personality because there are other spreads that are the representations of object like because you're it's familiar like with other father, representations of objects yeah um like but it's at least spread like the the interesting thing is it de- so knows the future but deliberately says it specifically does not see the future because there's the old you know be wary yeah. of anyone who claims to see the future but you claim to see the future be wary of anyone who claims to see the future you know um so the wind does that mean we don't have to be wary <laughs> So why did the wind know it without seeing it? Did she? I don't know. Maybe the wind's mm. blind. It heard yeah, the future. The wind. The it's wind. like I can't see the future, but I can <laughs> smell I <heard>. it. She, <laughs> she smelt the future. Oh, I smell. Does that smell like tragedy? <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of people are gonna die. Oh really? Him too? <laughs> Smells pancakes. Oh god. Lift lives. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, and then it's just kind of setting up that things are going to change now that Kaladin is involved. I don't think there's, there's too much. And then the big, the big um, rug pull is that like spren are less common now than they once were. Just again, hinting at a huge calamity, um, messing around with the bonds, potentially freeing, freeing Bam may do things to spread bonds and all of that also um, as a friendly reminder this is like we're up from page one to eight so these are excerpts from wind and truth but it's not like this is we're not getting all of the in-world text wind and truth presumably yeah just like that keep that in mind that these can have sentences in between them we have to keep in mind we don't know how many well you'll have in- to drop my theory that it's someone in using crayons really. <laughs> we are there's two of your theories that we're dropping the first of which is that and the second of which is Ad- adolin being odium's champion oh so, the second these chapters came out jake screenshotted the portion yeah. of adolin riding his horse in the sky <laughs> with a big goofy smile he goes yep there's your champion yeah yeah i i um I send him. There, there we goes, go. Mate. Adolin. There. Adolin was grinning like a boy playing in the rain, and gallant <laughs> galloped eagerly, wind blowing his lips back to expose his teeth, making that him look a- like he was grinning. Adolin Colin, high prince, son of the most powerful man on the planet, renowned swordsman, was secretly one of the goofiest people she'd ever known. Shalon man. emerged again and blinked, taking a memory of the two of them. Adolin with his goggles on, hair blowing about frantically, gallant charging uh yeah that's um it's gonna be tragic when uh he does turn. that's odium's champion everyone <laughs> it's foreshadowed as you can see um look at those teeth on gallant ready to you know bite he's gallant in the face <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Gal- like yeah imagine how tragic it'll be when gallant betrays dalinar that would honestly be like like if adolin he's not but if um if sanderson lost his marbles and decided to write wind and truth badly and made Adolin Odium's champion. <laughs> and Gallant betray Dalinar. That would be like Gallant betraying Dalinar would be extremely upsetting. It would be. Worse than Adolin, to be honest. Um, all right. So we're it's so foreshadowed this- with Adolin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to split these. Instead of doing like chapters, we're going to split it into Shallan and then Kaladin. So let's let's focus on Shallan right now. Um, so things like have gone from zero to a hundred. Um, as soon as they're about to leave for Azmir, they get attacked by heavenly ones and we get a lot of, a lot of light weaving magic with new abilities that have some maybe potentially been here the whole time. Um, and new oaths or new truths spoken, but kind of old truths reach retread. Um, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, Wait, so, did, I, did I miss something obvious? I don't remember new truths being spoken. At the end. At the end, mate. When she's like, I've been scared my whole life. And then she levels oh, up. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, pretty pretty big moment. Regality is what I. Is that was that, was that I so? Decided to would be. that have been one of the truths? I s- totally missed this somehow. Okay. That would have those would have been the truths that she spoke to Testament presumably because we know the truth she showed pattern. And, yeah, she brings so, us, and then that brings Testament back and lets her do fancy magic stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, does Shalan have a two track radiant path where she swears truths to Testament and Patton? Or is this just like a linear level up? It's kind of hard yeah, to say. Okay. Like, I totally missed this, but she... now I'm like working yeah. through it. That's a lot more because I was kind of like, oh, this is just like a thing that he kind of invented that she could do that she didn't know she could. Um, so it can be set up later when like, so we know she can do that. Now I'm like, if, if Shalon creates herself another split personality and just makes that personality as OP as possible, can she then, but something that was really interesting that I did notice is the shard blade cut the person. Like it was, it looked like a shard blade, but the shard plate, the radiant she created wielded worked like a normal sword. Cause the dude bled when yeah, got cut yeah. by the shard blade. Yeah. She, um, um, I'm assuming she killed him. But maybe yeah, not. but it's just, just it makes sense that like she can't recreate a shard blade. Um, right, 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 right. But I mean, normally like when shard blades kill people, it's like eyes burn out. And instead oh, it was just like a sword. You know what I mean? But That'd I'm like, if she cool. just creates another personality and that personality is just like super mega genius, who's also the best at fighting and can defeat Odium's champion. Um, could she then create with light weaving that version of herself? I and super mega could. genius well, just figure I mean, everything out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about the cognitive side of things, but physically the thing they is, seem to be going great. <laughs> I also think she can't just like be like, I'm going to create this personality and and mm, that's what I mean. Make it a super genius. They the capability anyway. Um, yeah, I think it's more simple, at least at this stage. Yeah. Um all right, so but to like pull back from that, I'm gonna like there's a lot of little things at the start of Shalan's chapter that I kind of wanted wanted to mention and the first okay. thing is about gallant um and we see i mean we don't have to stick on this too long but the whole after image thing with the rishadium just like and how gallant felt so like it felt like he finally found his like comfortable position which is the sky <laughs> for some reason it was like yes finally i can do what i'm meant to do that's what it felt like to me okay did you get that vibe or is just I mean, like <laughs> I got the vibe that he was having fun, but I don't know it didn't get the vibe that he was like, finally I get to fly through the air. Right. I feel like he's he's been doing his thing. But I mean him being a cognitive shadow is interesting. Is that what that is? Like is that I mean that's usually what it is like when Zeth has an after image. Cause he was like mm. his cognitive realm like right. part of him got shoved back into his body, like not great, and there was some kinks to that process. Mm. And so he has like a weird after image. So now it's like, okay, so this is like some other beings in quotation soul for lack of better term put back into this body of a horse. So it's like, <laughs> where did that, ha- how did that happen? That's what I mean. Like, like they're so intelligent. There's obviously a huge story that he's, he's really holding back on the Rishadium. Like he's been, t- he, you get like one bit of lore each book for these bloody horses. Are, and, uh, are yeah. the soul bits of, people that are in the cognitive realm after they die briefly are they in practice people spren and could you take a spren if you can take the people and put them back in their body and reanimate the people if they're metaphysically similar to spren could you also do that with spren and could gallant have been like a spren shoved into the body of a horse Now we're I just can't come up with this now. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> All right, so this is I mean, me being the crazy person. So I now you need you to be the dubious skeptic. I don't it. think it's like three guys in a trench coat theory. No, like, one spread in a horse. One spread in a horse suit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like those people who run with like the giant horse inflatable outfits are just Rishadium. Done. All right, kind let's of. move on from that. <laughs> that was a legitimate. Yeah. I'm actually like metaphysically because Rishadim are weird. Could they, they actually weird. be spren cognitive shadows in the bodies of fancy horses? <laughs> Where did they get the bodies of the fancy horses, though? Then is the question. <sighs> and it's because also, also they it's... have a bond with specific people the same way spren did. Yes, they do. And they're they're. And I think they might stone. be spren. Did you notice their hooves were stone? 
I felt. Yeah, yeah, that's been a thing for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> I just um, see the one stone. I'm like, yes, because that's part of the like. Um, there's a conversation Adolin and Renarin have an Oathbringer, where um, Adolin Renarin is like they don't belong, referring to normal horses because Rishaniums do belong because it's like, mm. what the hell are non-stone hooves? They don't belong on Roshar. Mm. So I guess. I don't know. Rashidim are weird. There's going to be some reveal about where they came from. And I'm now yeah. like, is, are they cognitive, spren cognitive shadows of some kind? That's what I'm leaning towards. Okay. Add it to the bingo card. And then we learned that shard, uh, like shard blade law, that they, why we can't find them just like laying down from years gone by is that because they yeah. are forgotten. And then they are left wondering, uh, shades more in this dead eye form. And, we see that Maya's really like coming into her own. She's like laughing at Adolin so, and showing a bit more emotion. So, so like Chekhov's massive collection of shard blades is a thing, right? Mm. Like I can spoil Hero of Ages here, right? <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll tag it. So this next portion will have Mistborn okay. Arrow on spoilers. Watch so like, out. you know, the end of Hero of Ages when all the like people who got snapped by the mist and became seers were burned through all the ATM and mm-hmm. like did their one, their army thing. Like that's yeah. happening with shard blades, right? I mean, like the shard blades are getting like someone is finding the mass of all the spren and they're getting recreated in, in the cognitive, in the physical realm. And, and people are an entire army of like shard bears <laughs> is happening. Yeah, I mean, that seems quite likely. Or alternatively, now that we can spoil Mistborn, I was thinking of like just how the, just how, um, you often see Inquisitors or even Kelsia with like 50 daggers, like kind of like around them. I want one guy with every lost shard blade as a how do you, mega structure around him ready how do you to go. You even do that. Well, I'm sure there's a way. There's definitely a way. Some guys do it. I mean, Sanderson he last time he did this. Because, like, the ones with the Seers, that I think is the best pre-battle speech that Sanderson has ever written. Ellen's one. The, yeah. Eventually they will kill us, but first they will fear us. I'm always yeah. like, let's go. Let's <laughs> kill these fools. Um, yeah, let's do that again, but with shard okay. blades. Yeah, let's, Who would let's win, an army of again. people with shard blades or an army of Seers? Oh no! Another another <laughs> misspoil. I think that, I think the seers win if they only have the blades, no plate. Okay. All right. Um. Yep. And then we get felt the world hopper, who's like, "Hey, I'm a world hopper," and Shalon's like, "Hey, I don't think you're from here." That was a nice little detail. And then, um, we've got the the Cosmere sidle with the herald, um, immediately foreshadowing the like physical manifestations of Shalan's light weaving where he says light yes light energy matter investiture they're all variations on a theme the same essence in different forms that is especially important for you to understand with your illusions um great timing great timing Harold. and um we get the nice hug and he wants to be better we all do and it reminded me of this is our second Harold hug because we had lift and nail this is our mm. Add it to the Herald hug scenes. I wonder if we'll get no, more. No one gave Jezrean a hug. He needed a hug. No, so they he's just all in the hug. I yeah, they all need a hug. I love that. Um, I mean, Dalinar gave Jezrean hey, a drink. <laughs> Shalon probably hugged her mother at some point in her life. Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, third, third confirmed. <laughs> I reckon you know maybe Dalinar and Jezrean when they're having having you know a beer. Yeah, thanks for the beer. Alice. Bit of a bro okay. hug. Maybe it's a thing. Maybe once all the heralds are hugged, the world is saved. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, but how can we hug this one? And she'll, and it can be revealed. Shalon can be like, my last truth is that I have <laughs> oh, hugged the Dustbringer Herald because it was my mother and I've known all along and suppressed it. Uh, well, this is a great transition because she gets kind of triggered and she's like... Oh man. I think it says memories of Shades Ma as early as childhood tied to what she did to her mother and testament. I think so, if her final truth was that her mom was a herald and she knew oh that she'd kill the herald, oh my god, you would die. 
Like you'd I would be physically it, die on the spot, and you would actually perish. And I'd have to like someone would have to make a video and be like, I have to be like, yeah, I'm really sorry to tell you all that um, this is uh, this is kind of awkward because uh, it's a really dang. tragic announcement. But spoilers for Wind and Truth. Um, when Shalon, I did my death, death game with a spoiler warning. <laughs> Would you like it any oh, other way? Yeah, um, it's so perfect. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. So I, I'm so I, I have to say, it, spoilers for Wind and Truth, but Christian has tragically passed away because he read that um, Shalon's oh, fifth God. truth was that her mom was a herald, and he actually suffered two strokes, three heart attacks, and and four panic attacks, oh. and just like he died in like seven different ways simultaneously. <laughs> I mean, you're not far off what could happen. I think I, I don't I, I physically don't understand how I would cope reading such a reveal after building it up for so long. Because I haven't video, considered I like this bleep ing told you so. Everyone <laughs> exclaim. Uh, it's not like I made this up. I'm just like maybe the most obsessed person with it. Um but what is this, man? She's got, she's like, she, she mentions it. Memories as early as childhood tied to what she did to her mother in Testament because she, she hates Shades much, like these bloody beads. So it stands to reason that she was peeking into Shades more when she, you know. Yeah, because I think the first time she was like learning, probably learning powers and stuff because she hit like fourth ideal or something. I don't know. some Enough of an ideal to have a shard, a shard blade. for um, yeah. So she would Which have is- had access to soul casting. So. Which is, is that third? Third for a blade? I think it is. I believe so. And then. Yeah, so, yeah. Because it's, well, it is for Windrunners at least. Because for Kaladin, yeah. he gets the blade when he hits us with the, uh, I will protect even those I hate as long as it is right. Also, I regret to inform everyone that my cat has readjusted and is no longer in danger of falling Boo. off the <laughs> <Boo>. <laughs> um, Okay, okay. All right. Well, Let's let's theorize on this then. So, um, Abidi the monarch who bathes in the blood of radiance, straight up super villain views. It's just I, like I am here. I think Sanderson <laughs> has fun with the fact that for some of the hues, he can just write absolutely deranged <laughs> antagonist. Like normally with people, he tries to like write the antagonist as having some understandable point of view, and yeah. I think he has a lot of fun with the fact that it's like well. These people have been insane for 6,000 years, so I can just write yeah. the most unhinged people that, like, I possibly can. Did you notice, like, the... Is it the Urukai? Is that what the shout-out is with the white hand of Sar- uh, Saruman on them? And these I have, didn't like, the white... that, but that's cool. Like, they've got, like, the white... This guy had a white glyph on his face, and I'm like, this feels very... Who do you serve? Saruman. <laughs> and he's just like yeah glyph on the head and he any he, he also kind of singles out light weavers before he dies he's like i will take all the light weavers for the uh, and then he dies um Forgot racked. yeah so she says i'm afraid afraid of everything terrified of the world of what might happen to my family most of all of myself i always have been and then her, her eyes glow she manifests radiant behind him and then and then we get reality. Shalon Hist is what I decided to be, which is just add it to the list of badass Stormlight quotes moments. Did Throw accidentally quote Thanos. Did accidentally <laughs> quote Thanos. Although yeah. Thanos said reality can be whatever I want. Um, but also, so we do have, I think, a hint that this is that I should have realized is not normal light weaver ability because this dude presumably has fought light weavers before. Mm. And so he would know if this was a thing that had happened um but yeah abidi the monarch is <laughs> wonder what he was a monarch of yeah like he surely he's not fully dead he's got the name drop unless it's like a funny like oh so, he's dead actually um also it's interesting that this radiant she created is taller than herself like i get why she's more muscular because she trained but also she can make can she just i'm still like can she can she just like make the worst well, of herself? we need to reread that scene in oathbringer right which has got radiant and veil with her yeah shalon i just need you to re- imagine a split personality of yourself who's a fullborn okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So do you think this truth is like, do you think there's two paths, the Testament path and the pattern path? Like, yeah, I think, I mean, it was, I think it mentioned in like one of the flashbacks that she got like the memories of like rattling off truths much more quickly than she did the second time. So I do think she said separate truths because I mean, she couldn't have said the first truths the first time she like for Testament because she hadn't killed her dad or mom yet. So Mm. she couldn't be like, I've killed my mother. It's like, well, your mom's right there. So, um, and I guess this is, um, two of one of them. I, yeah, I'm trying to find her truths in a nice, in a nice clear way. Let me see if I can pull this up. Yeah, I mean the other the the pattern ones are I killed my mom, I killed or I killed my dad, I killed my mom, I killed my friend. Um, <laughs> sorry. Also, I, mean, I killed a herald who happened to be my. Um, <laughs> and then I don't know if we know of other ones other than I'm afraid, afraid of everything, terrified of the world, of what might happen to my family. Most of all, of myself, I always have been. That's, by the way, like, I get why current Shalon would think that, but does that mean, like, 10-year-old Shalon said this? Mm. Maybe. kind of dark 10-year-old Shalon. I know, but Shalon's life is extremely dark. <laughs> Didn't Shalon's life kind of become dark when she killed her mom, though? With the blade mm. that she got from swearing these truths? Yeah, the timelines. Well, there's so much. There's so much hazy memory involved here. We don't really know. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on with the timeline. Summing up the fandom's thoughts there, Jake. <laughs> I think yeah. I think we could spend another hour trying to figure it out. Um, but alas, time is limited. Also, Do you wanna- I mean, Salon says reality is what I want it to be, but also she couldn't create a fake person with a shard blade. Just a normal sword that kind of looked like a shard blade. <laughs> I mean, if she imagine create someone with an impractical shard blade, like it'll actually be impractical. Jake throwing shade for one of the coolest scenes so far. That was pretty damn cool. <laughs> but I, I mean, yeah. like, damn, can't even create a real blade, shard blade. Um, I mean, that would kind of break it. Um, but I'm sure by the yeah, that'd be pretty overpowered. Well. Yeah. All right. I'm not. Um, I, I don't, yeah. I think she'll create full-born Shalon, who will compound all the metals. Hell yeah. And then be very determined and get the mom <laughs> mentality. <laughs> <laughs> the only want- other detail from Shalon's side is um, the Fabriel that, oh, I think the one that, oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God. Wait, we got to talk about this. When she deletes Dre's lashing on her yeah that was cool she like steals his identity with a capital i cosmia wise is that what happened there where she's like be dre um that's what it felt like i was like she just became him because identity is uh is like a thing that you can yeah um i I did. Right? I missed that again. I thought she was <laughs> taking the stormlight and like sucked it in like she would from like a gemstone. But yeah, yeah, but she's maybe yeah, she has that. to take the identity to be able yeah, to do that. That's- yeah, because you can't delete anyone else's lashing that we've seen. You have to, it's, no. it's tied to their identity. So she freaking became somebody else and was like, okay, I'm gonna so you can access the same properties as you can with Barukami. Through. Yeah. This is a thing. This is yeah. a thing. Someone can give themselves the mama mentality with Stormlight. <laughs> I know we're back here. The compounding d- determination. But there's so it's much back. weird you can store with like Farukami that like now I'm like, okay, so someone can probably access this like mm. connection. Could you? Oh, I, I guess think, Dalinar already accesses collection with languages, like when yeah, he's yeah, able yeah. to speak oh, with people. Absolutely, absolutely. Fortune, you can get luck. Storm blessed. Oh, relating to luck, seeing the future or versions of the future. Mm. Um, 
that's what I mean. Like the further we get into the Cosmere, it just feels like one fat magic system with kind of like themes. Yeah. Kind of yeah. always has been. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we've never man. seen that before. That was that was amazing, and okay, I think okay, okay, mm. hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Shalon's memories are really messed up. Um, memories are one of like cop- copper mines. You store memories in them. Did she burn up the memories with stormlight and get rid of them, the same way you would like store them into a copper mine? That's the case. Can you access them again? Like, is that why she's able to access them when she swears oaths? It could be something funky like that, or it could just be a repressed trauma. It's one of the two. I think Sanderson's got to walk a fine line between repressed trauma doesn't mental health come back when you swear oaths, though. Yeah, I know, but like, I just mean he's got to when you write stuff like this because it's such a mentally mental health focused book. You got, yeah. you got to be careful when you make it magic. I think you have to be careful wanna... with like the reaction to the trauma, but I I think it's pretty mm. apparent that her amnesia is has magical stuff going on metaphysically. Do you think so? I'm not sure that it is. Well, it's I'm just, that's just sense. thought it'd be pretty if it's like, oh, we're going to write some trauma-based amnesia. And so the way it works is when you say the truth, you suddenly are able to remember the stuff again. Right. right? Okay. But it, it makes sense if there's like copper mine stuff going on. Like the amount of, oh, there's so much interesting stuff with surge binding. I thought I knew how surge binding worked, <laughs> Christian. No longer. It's no so longer. much cooler. <laughs> it is yeah it is all right kaladin mate let's talk about kaladin um yeah slightly less uh less eventful chapters for him than i might say some um, might say but he found a rock he did find a rock this um if you're a listener of this podcast i hope you also freaked out when you saw this rock i really do um but let me try and sum it up so kaladin is in Ethereum still um he talks to Nightblood a little bit, which is fun. We get the rock um, showing Gen up. small horse toy as well. That oh, has yeah. to have come from his vision in Chapter 104 of Rhythm of War. When like, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so then so we also see Dabbit stuff. and his new Spren. We see Leighton and his weird wooden carapace um, paraphernalia. And <laughs> we see a so- Solemnity Spren um and we're about to head off basically more or less a few goodbyes a few hugs um but the biggest thing obviously is this is this rock and tn's wooden horse so this yeah like you said this horse has shown up at the end of rhythm of war and we still have no clue why the hell it showed up how it showed up um how well do you remember that scene of him finding that horse you mean the one from Rhythm of War or the one from yeah, this chapter? Not, uh, the one from Rhythm of War. Like, uh, it is the same one, it's it Rhythm of War. Yeah, surely. Yeah. <laughs> I've only read Rhythm of War. It's the one I've only read once, so it's the one okay. I remember the least. But it's obviously a reasonably memorable scene. Yeah. Um, it's it's but like during the climax with... Yeah, he Dal- only ever saw it, like, in the vision that Dalinar was able to send him to the Stormfather, right? No, but then he ha- had it physically. Yeah. And he had rock. it physically by the end, and you're like, what? But the rock is new. The rock is brand new. Bro, put it, water on the rock. It'll change yeah. color. All right. <laughs> yeah, because we, when Jimmy and I reread The Way of Kings, um, there's a lot of funky stuff. When Whenever Tien gives um, Kaladin rocks, he like feels better in a very Stormlight magical kind of way. Um, so this feels like Tien peeking through the curtain of the spiritual realm, being like, hey, brother, here's another rock. Be careful. And obviously that that horse is also made in the Way of Kings flashbacks too. So it's from their past, which made me wonder if this rock is also an, a rock from the Way of Kings as well. Because he met, he goes to the effort of saying it's dull brown. And with that, I'm going to look. I'm going to go find gonna, all the I'm gonna, I'm dull brown. <laughs> I'm going to so- search dull brown and, yeah. and h- hope for... A quick result and a quick aha moment here in the Wedding Kings. Can we just talk about Kaladin always felt uncertain packing for the night as he never knew he'd be able to magic it all back together in a similarly tight and efficient way? Can we just see how real that is? Whenever like you pack for camping or like something, <laughs> yeah. and then when you're repacking at the end and it's just like in the morning and you're just like shoving everything back in and you're just like, how the hell did I do this? It's just, 
I just want to say <laughs> Kaladin real like that. That was so real, real. Kaladin moment. Relatable. All right. So if I search brown rock, it nothing comes up or Del whatever. Brown? Del brown, nothing comes up. But if I search brown, like brown's mentioned 10 billion times. So I might need to come back to this. Oh, 10 billion times. That's Yeah. It's, he loves <laughs> this word. Um, oh, the weeping note. It's dark brown eyes, brown eyes, man in brown. No, I'll I'll have a look, but it could be an old TN rock is what I'm saying. Top 10 rocks returning (laughs) potentially. So what is this dude? Is this TN? Is this TN actually meddling? Like this is very strange to me. Yeah. I mean the entire like people able to manifest stuff from the spiritual realm is kind of as 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 you could say the implications i feel like we're gonna get so much good lore in this book it's gonna be so hype i know i know and i yeah oh i guess it's it's just one of those huge question marks it's just it's just rocks my set like one of my favorite saved so many mysteries for this for this book i feel like he had all these mysteries and he's been kind of we've been learning about them for like the first four books and mm-hmm. then it's just like a second wind of mysteries he's like have another hundred okay lots of lots of little like little passing moments in the Kaladin chapter so obviously we have this like Nightblood is like Lyft's best friend and they're talking about snacks it's yeah the buddy cop movie has officially begun um Kaladin's like oh a woman in her 50s why is she joining the wind wind runners I'm just like Hell yeah, man. Let's go. These damn Stormlight protagonists and their stereotyping. They're just like, what? They're both hitting us with their stereotyping in this chapter. (laughs) I know, Shalad. What, tattoos? So edgy. Yeah. Um, And then this solemnity spread. I was like, how does Kaladin know that this is a solemnity spread? Like, how does one know when this rare type of weird spread? I mean, I guess it's not rare enough. I don't know. It's It's an extremely rare yeah but rare uh, how do you know the solar eclipses <laughs> all right okay yeah that's like the best way to shut that down so quickly <laughs> i completely understand <laughs> that's so true oh wrecked wrecked live and recorded i was expecting you to be it. like well i have the internet and i was gonna be like how do people before the internet know what a solar eclipse is i don't know no, no one of my yeah. friends probably were like yeah this is what it looks like <laughs> that was so stupid now that i think back anyway <laughs> um, it happens Dabber. you can always you can just edit that bit out you can no just... no nah, nah, i have to i have to be keep my integrity all right so um david getting a, a new sprint and they kind of like oh what's gonna happen to david um if he bonds it which i suppose is an interesting question about spren bonds i think it's all to do how you see yourself right so i, I don't know if all that much will change with david and then relaine's got a party for getting a spren i forgot that re- that was a thing um which makes me want to reread Rhythm of War if I can manage it. I'm going to, then, for sure. And then Seal's like, I'm going to gather my things. And Kaladin's like, what things could you possibly have? And I don't know if this is just another, like, comedic punchline like they did with Gallant, or it's going to be an actual thing, like, Seal's going to have something important to bring with her. Well, it wasn't a comedic punchline for Gallant. They did take the horse. Yeah, but that's funny. <laughs> it's like teeth are bad. Have you ever seen a horse's a horse with its teeth bad? This is funny. Well, I've never seen a horse <laughs> fly through the air. <laughs> um, wait. Also, is Gallant okay? Is he still lashed? He's probably still lashed. I think he's still words. lashed. They they said like they lasting, ignored yeah. they ignored Gallant, and he's yeah. just floating it's gotta, in the sky. It's gonna like psychologically be a bit tough for Adolin like growing up the entire his entire life as like a shard bearer being like the best duelist on Roshar and now he's just like the least useful person oh. hey dude time. Adolin was like in his he was pretty bad badass throwing maces and stuff at people. although bro gets to kind of show how much of a badass he is because now he can really like be outmatched yeah exactly oh my god I just realized what this scene reminded me of and it's so stupid because I'm like I was like drawing upon an image in my head of a horse in the air and it's freaking Shrek 2 when Donkey gets turned into a horse and he's levitated in the air. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, there it is. That's what I was thinking of. That's funny. anyway. That's, that's that's the vision you saw when you were reading it. it that's comes, what you pictured in your inner eye. Yeah. Island. It always comes back to Shrek, honestly. Um, and then look, we get 
like I, I guess it's just goodbyes and we get a closer look at how Dre's go oh not Dre. Um Layton is going Scar. and how Scar, Scar who Jimmy Scar. forgot about. Did he? Did he forget? One Jimmy? of the episodes he was like, Who's Scar? I remember I commented <laughs> on it and I was like, Bro, he forgot about Scar? Scar, the the third best spearman in the original Bridge Four, only behind Moash and Kaladin. Scar, who teams up with Drehi and saves Adeline when he goes to fall into the chasms yes. in, in Words of Radiance and then helps Adolin take his armor off and Adolin tells him he deserves a raise. Scar, who saved Gavinor when they, he got abandoned in Kolinar <laughs> and they show up at the end and it's like yeah. life before death because they got him out. Like Scar's, oh, oh, Scar's an icon. That's and my he's... short king right there. He's thrown out spears like yeah. it's uh, like it's a Black Friday sale or something. Um, yeah, and he's got a great scene yeah. in Rhythm of War as well. Or no, not in Oathbringer in the Bridge Four point of views where uh, everyone else is like swearing their ideals and he's like one of the last of OG Bridge Four to swear mm. the ideals. So he's like relegated from combat and which is tough because he's, he's like one of the best spearmen and, 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 and then he, he starts glowing when he's helping other people glow and he's like oh i can like teach people it's cool anyway scar's yeah. great yeah, random really cool side character you've helped um, a lot of people with that because to play devil's advocate it's so easy to forget like someone ever in this Jimmy, series. everyone but you remember who scar was you're the only <laughs> one who forgot everyone was like what do you mean scar that <laughs> well he's like a main guy <laughs> He always teams Dre up with Drehi as well. They're the dynamic duo. Yeah, it's cool. Well, hopefully to be reunited shortly, but we shall see. Hopefully. Who knows if Dre's making it back? Um, certainly not every wind runner's making it back. But Jake, this is your last uh, Lost in Rosha for some time. What are your what are your closing statements? Closing I can read the epigraph before. from chapter ten for everyone. No, don't <laughs> no. No, you'll <laughs> never get an arc again. No. I don't but. think I don't think they'd stop me. Exclusive last It's gonna come out Monday anyway. No. I refuse. I refuse. Um I, I, hey, hey, after we end this, I could just read chapter ten to you out loud. No, I refuse. I shall I shall experience it with everyone else one weekend. Okay, time. yeah. Any closing predictions? Lost in um I'm going to predict some really cool lore stuff. I feel like probably the like reading ahead, I don't think I'm going to get that many answers in what mm. I have. I'm going to get a lot of questions. Okay. Um and I'll be I'll be I'll be watching and watching other people's reactions, which is the way I like it to be. <laughs> oh, so I can no. pick all the spoiler bars. Oh, um, man. you're going to watch me make a fool of myself for like a few more months. <laughs> hey, what if what if what if you keep getting everything bang on right, and it'll increase my faith in your in your predictions, and then I'll just consider you a source of truth. I mean, that just sounds like another day in my life, you know. As You're like that actually always happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You haven't been doing Lost in Roshar long enough to be vindicated with your predictions. This could no. be a this could be a big thing for you. Are you going to have yeah. a video of like everything that I previously predicted? In I mean, wind and that's truth. the first thing Jimmy and I did when the wind was a voice. We're just like victory lap. We're like, who? Like, we spotted the voice in the way of kings. I mean, we didn't know it was the bloody wind, but we knew something was happening. There's so many voices. Do yeah. you think that the wind gave Dal? Do you remember the dream I'm talking about in Oathbringer that Dalinar saw? I know. I remember the scene, but not in detail. Like, I remember yeah, like he about. he went to. If I remember correctly, it was back to um, what's the guy's name who wrote the way of kings like the in-world way of kings, brain fire oh, noah dawn right. yeah and yeah, noah dawn yeah. goes to the market to like bargain and is buying yes. some grain and then he like bargains a ton and gets it for really cheap and then just like pays the expensive price anyway and then dalinar's like hey that, i've never seen that vision before uh, how come you've never shown it to me before and the Stormfather's like i do remember this now yeah i didn't do anything so do you think the wind gave him that vision and what it seems like that's the best contender Contend yeah, I mean, now. we didn't have contenders before now, and now we do. Yeah, yeah. I've gone from I them. have no idea to oh, I have one idea. It doesn't feel like an odium vision, does it? Feels no. like a very wholesome no. and and wind kind of vision. Tanavast is pretty dead. So, eh. Liren's doing fine. 
he's <laughs> all right i'm taking it too far okay so i'm on with you now on the shallan's mother being a herald but liren being tan of ass is where i, draw the <laughs> I line. know i know i actually but draw Liren- the line at adolin being odium's champion actually that's what i'll end with adolin is not odium's champion he never yeah. will be odium's champion at no point has he ever been what? odium's champion it's never been plausible it's only gotten less plausible over time <laughs> um let it die all right well Thanks, Jake. Fun police for uh, your last <laughs> your last closing thoughts. <laughs> Thank um, you so much for having me on, Lost and Roshar. I I hope the people watching or listening or both uh, enjoyed my random rants about stuff. Um, and I'm sure we'll get your post Wind and Truth. Uh, oh yeah, for Wind and Truth is going to be awesome. Down and thoughts. Oh, it's going to be great. All right, guys. Thank you. Are you going to? Ooh, After yeah. the pre-release chapters end, mm. are you going to double back to Words of Radiance and eventually do Wind yeah. and Truth when you get to it? Yeah. Or are you going to do like continue with we'll Wind do, and Truth? We'll do a few Wind and Truth episodes. We'll probably like do it maybe like a Wind and Truth Part it. Three, Wind and Truth Part Four, Wind and Truth Part Five. Probably, yeah, and then circle back to to Words of Radiance and do it do it all again. I think that's the plan. Cool. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, as always, thanks for accompanying us on this episode of Lost in Roshar. Remember, the most important chapter a, re- a man can read is the next one. Or if you're Jake, you read a whole bunch of them. Yeah, and get I'm going to read the next chapter. See, he's telling me to read the next chapter <laughs> yeah, and that that's the yeah. most important one. <laughs> we'll see you next time as we jump into the next preview chapters. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave us a review on whichever platform you listen on. If you have feedback, questions, or theories, span read us at lostinrosha at gmail.com. We'll see you next time on Lost in Rosha. Please keep those safe hands covered. <laughs>